Hello everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're early retirees, debt and mortgage free, British, retired and living a really thrifty and frugal life here in France. And every Sunday we open our home, we open up to you and share aspects of our thrifty and frugal life in particular to our life here in France. So let's take a look at what we got up to this week. So this Sunday's video is all about difficult decisions and big purchases which should be called head-scratching decisions and massive purchases because the two biggest things you're ever going to buy are your house and a car and normally you would buy both of those either with a mortgage or on some kind of finance deal because let's face it those things are so big you would normally just go out and buy them for cash well we did we bought the house that we're in for cash because we sold our UK house and we came here with cash. And now we've reached a point where we had saved to buy a car. And we were gonna go out with this huge amount of money and buy this extraordinarily expensive item. And for frugal people, that's a massive thing. So it's something that we've thought about and we've researched and we've been on the internet and we've we've been looking and oh my goodness me like i said it's been a difficult decision and a big purchase so let's go on to how we arrived at that decision so in case you're wondering when we came from the UK, we bought a British vehicle with us. So the steering wheel is on the right hand side. And when we were in the UK and we were selling up our house and we were relocating to France, what we needed was a van. A van is because obviously the vehicle has got no windows in the back, it's just the two seats in the front. What we needed was a van, but we couldn't afford one. So we needed to find a compromise and we bought a Berlingo, a Citroën Berlingo. Bert the Berlingo to you and I, we know Bert the Berlingo, don't we? He's a great big van. So his steering wheel is on the right and obviously everyone else in the France drives on the left. And it's not easy, it never has been. And I've allowed Mike to do most of the driving, which is nice to be chauffeured around. But it does, there are times when I needed to have gone places on my own, driving this huge, great big van. And I can tell you something, I've reached that point where I went, do you know what, I'm nervous. I can't see when I'm pulling out of junctions. And it's time, it is time. And we've been saving and saving and saving. And I can't, I don't need to tell you either, especially if you're in the UK or you're here in mainland Europe, the car, market is bonkers you have to wait such a long time for a new car that what people are doing are they are deciding instead to buy a used car or a nearly new used car and that has really really put up the price of used cars so it was literally reaching the point that if you saw a car and you delayed so you saw a car x and you delayed it, and you looked again two months later at car X, you went, well, that's 750 euros more than it was last time. So we'd reached a point where we actually went, yeah, we're gonna do it now. We're gonna do it now. We're gonna go out there. We've made this decision, but the Blingo's big old van, his steering wheels in the wrong place. Now is the time. So like I said, this was a head scratchingly difficult decision. So I live in Brittany, 
which is an extremely rural part of France. We've got our nearest town, which is a 20 minute drive, and the cities where I would have a lot more choice are an hour or more in different directions. So we brought our choice down to the cars that we could buy in the nearby town. And then we brought our choice down again to the price bracket of buying a Renault. And we particularly and only wanted to buy a French car. They're just, it's just a simpler process for us in our thinking because we already had enough decisions to make, aren't you? And there are so many choices when it comes to buying a car. So we knew what we wanted to do was buy a French car, and what we wanted to do was buy a Renault. And now we're gonna share with you how we went out trying out cars. One, you don't see us drive, but three of them you do see us drive, and stay to the end, you'll see the very car that we bought. test drive and we are sitting in a car called a Renault Kajar. It's an automatic which we've never owned an automatic before. It's really good to drive. It's got a very small engine but you wouldn't know it's got a very small engine. So this is, this is, this is a maybe isn't it? Yeah, it's def this a definite is, maybe. <laughs> this is definitely a maybe. I won't tell you the price of it. The car price is just eye watering. I don't need to tell you that. So we're about to go back to the garage and we're going to take out another one. But this was car number two. Car number two. So we tried a Dacia Duster. And after driving the Dacia Duster, now driving this one, this, this car's amazing. It's really much better, isn't it? Much so yeah. much, much better. So this, so was the Dacia Duster not a contender? I don't think so. No, I don't think don't, so. You don't think so, neither, do you? No, I don't think so. But this Renault, what is it? Kajar? Kajar. 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 Kajar is definitely a contender. We're going to go back to the garage, see if we can take another one out. So, car number three. We are now sitting in a Renault Capture. And from the outside, it looks tiny. It's about the size of a Volkswagen Golf, a Peugeot 206 or 208. But it drives like a little sports car on rails. And it is, even though it's an older car, was it five years old? I'm not sure. Five, about five years old. In miles, it's only done 20,000 miles. So, and it's top of the range. What does that mean? It means it's nice. It means it's nice. It's a really good car. So this is car number three, a Renault Capture. And it's captivated me. It's lovely. It's a really, really nice car. But we're gonna go back and try car number four. <laughs> are now on car number four. This is a Dacia Sandero Stepway. And this is a brand new car and the same price as the Kajal. And it's the most economic to ride. You can see here, although this is a tiny car, my big six foot husband sitting in the back of it with plenty of room. It's great to drive. Oh, I could do Top Gear. There it is. Look at it. Let's take you back and show you this little car. Look at that. And this one would come with five years warranty. The same price as the Kajar. Oh, we are torn. I hate having all this choice. Not, again, I'm not going to tell you the price of it. You can always go on to any website in France and Google the price of these cars. But there it is. It's the new Dacia Sandero Setway, car number four. 
this one is definitely a contender. So I am in number two test drive car. This is a Renault Kajar. And I think this is the one that we are going to buy, this very car. I feel really safe in it. Um, steering wheel's in the right place. It is absolutely stuck to the road. And this is an automatic, so all I have to do is turn it on and drive it. And I feel so incredibly safe in it. It feels so solid. How does it feel where you are over there, Mike? It's it's really lovely. It's nice to be this side of the road without this side of the car without a steering wheel in my hand. Yeah, and um, when we've got our previous car, which is Bert the Bolingo, and he is a big car. He is a big van. He's like a like a minivan driving your minivan round. And this is a much, 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 much smaller car. Really good. Is this the junction I'm going to go off here soon, Mike? It is. If you pull in here, my darling. Okay. So there we were, test driving them. We did the big test drive on one day and we went back on the next day and drove the one that we were pretty sure about again. And this time we took it out on quite a long journey and I did most of the driving. So I drove all the way there and Mike drove all the way back. And I genuinely felt confident and safe in the Kajar. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why did you buy the Kajar, which was a second-hand car, a used car, and not the Sandero that was a new car? Well, when we took the Sandero out, we said to you it had a five-year warranty. It didn't have a five-year warranty. It had a three-year warranty. And when we came back, and when we're not sure about this, the garage suddenly said to us, we can sell you a warranty. So off we went and went, well, tell us about this. Tell us about how much this is going to cost. So we went and sat down, as you do, in the sales office. And we got the price of the car, plus all the taxes and all the paperwork, car grease, all of that stuff in France which amounts to hundreds, may I add, and the warranty. And that took us over the amount of money that we wanted to spend. And we told them that. We told them our final figure that we wanted to spend. But we presented this to them. We didn't have to haggle, we just presented it to them. Can you do that Kajar for our final price, including all the paperwork, and that three-year warranty and we'll buy it now and they agreed so we got the used car that we wanted with a really economical engine it's an automatic car it's much smaller than the car we've got it's very economical to run it's economical to insure for the right price and a three and a half year warranty because it already came with a half year warranty. So a three and a half year warranty. Now, you know, we're frugal people, we're thrifty people, which means we want to get the very best we can for the budget that we've got. So we decided on our budget and we felt for us, we got the very best car at the budget we've got. But oh my, if you're out there buying a car at the moment, I feel for you because it's a difficult market and it's a very difficult decision and it's a huge amount of money that's gonna be, whoosh, gone from our savings account and we'll feel that for a while, I promise you. So there we go. It was a difficult few days. It was a very big purchase. So 
there was our video this week of what we got up to in that huge, big, difficult decision and a big, big purchase. I've got a question for you. How do you go about reasoning through, thinking through a big purchase, something that you've saved up for? How do you do that? Because I shared with you how I did it. Maybe you do it differently. Anyway, if you've liked this video this week, go on, give it a like. Another thing is we are so close to 15,000 subscribers, or who knows, we might have got to 15,000 subscribers by the time you watch this video. But go on, if you're not a subscriber, what's stopping you? Come on in and join the family. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thank you so much to everybody who watches our videos. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.